I saw this video with Paul Davids and Dominic Miller and it's about Bossa Nova, right? And I have been watching it for many times. I've been reading the comments. There were a lot of comments about the diminished chord and they don't get really into the diminished chord. I want to talk about the diminished chord because it appears quite often in Bossa Novas, especially Shobim, you know, there's so many tunes with this diminished chord. It's kind of a mystery to many. And today I want to try to break it down as simple as possible and just talk about this sound that's so beautiful and also show you some ways how you can navigate it in your soul. If you want to get into jazz music and you didn't find your way in yet, Bossa Nova is a very good place to start. That's how I started. I listened to a ton of Bossa Nova. It has the complex harmonies and the chords that you can use later on in the chest and it's as well. And maybe it's a little bit easier to get into it because it's such an emotionally rich music and the rhythm and stuff. It's just beautiful, right? So in this video, they're talking about Corcovado, right? It's starting on this A minor six chord, right? into this G sharp diminished chord with a flat 13. Right, and there's so many questions about why is that a flat 13 and what the is going on, right? And then it just continues into a 2-5-1 to F major, just that in some recordings there's also another diminished chord, the F diminished, leading into the F major chord. Right, so let's just check the diminished chord for a second. How is it built? The diminished chord has all minor thirds stacked upon each other. And like this we get the root, the minor third, the flat five, and the six actually, right? So if our starting point is the A flat, the F is sort of a six, right? But many musicians also say it's like a double flatted seven. Sort of, it takes the place of a seven, right? We have, we know all those chords, one, three, five, seven, right? And this is sort of the seven, but yeah, technically speaking, it's a six. <laughs> so I'm going to refer to it as a six now, right? And that's it, that's how you build this chord. And there's some very, popular shapes. I'm going to show you the most popular three. This is this one and this one, which is basically the same one, right? Because just the note on the low E string goes to the high E string. And then there's also this chord, right? So they all have the A flat as a root, you might possibly know already that any of those notes in this chord can be the root because it's symmetrical, right? Wherever you're starting on, you're going to have only minor thirds stacked upon each other. So you can say it's an A flat diminished, F diminished, C flat diminished, D diminished, right? And they're also just to make it complete. There's of course also the diminished triad that's basically the same thing. It's just like two thirds stacked upon each other, right? Like the A flat, the C flat, and the D, and then no six, but that's just what the diminished triad. I have to honestly say, I never play like a diminished triad voicing. I wouldn't even know one, I guess. So I'm, if I'm seeing a diminished <laughs> sign, it's always going to be most of the time one of those three voicings. And I just wanted to quickly mention, I also have a Patreon channel. You can access all the PDFs that I have there. If you're a Patreon, you can download them for free. There's a search bar where you can look for the PDF and then you get it, or you can also buy it at allthethingsguitar.com. I also have a monthly practice session, practice with me, that's brand new. And basically that's a live stream where you get the practice plan in advance. It's a 30 minute live stream. You can see me practice and you can just like play along. And other than that, there are going to be three videos that are going to analyze those three tunes that I have been talking about in the beginning of the video, like, you know, Wave, Corcovado and Insensitive, how insensitive 
and if you want to make sure that those videos are uploaded you can also join patreon just like this without becoming a member but then you see still see what's what is up on my channel and then you can join whenever you find a standard that you really want to investigate there's going to be an analysis and also how you can solo over those tunes so i'm using patreon also for the in-depth analysis of now the what's with the flat 13 right you know that chords can have options or alterations color notes notes that don't you know that don't make up the structure of a chord if we have a c major chord what does make up the structure of the C major chord? Is the C, E and the G, right? And if it's a C major seven chord, right? Let's play this one. Then we have C, E, G and the B, right? So one, three, five, seven, I would always say one, three, five, seven. It's really the backbone of all those chords that have like three thirds stacked upon each other, right? So one, three, five, seven, that's like the basic thing that a chord is built upon. And those are the notes that we want to have in a chord voicing. And then we can add extra notes that either stem from the scale where the chord stems from, or they can stem from a melody in a jazz standard. And with a diminished chord, it's not different. As we can have a C major seven chord, we can have a nine, that's a color note. We can have a G7 chord, we can have a sharp nine, that's an alteration, right? But at the core, the chord always stays a major seven chord, a minor seven chord, just like, think about it as a tree, one, three, five, seven is the tree, and then the nine and the sharp 11 and the flat 13, and just like the lametta that gets to be put on the Christmas tree, right? Christmas is coming near. So, and with the diminished, you have a very easy way to find out which notes you can add. They are always a whole tone higher than every or any of those notes in the diminished chord. So we had an A flat, right? So we can add a whole tone higher, a B flat. There would be a nine. People don't talk about those options for the diminished chord, <laughs> but they're so beautiful. Be sure to try, try them out. Then we have the, right, the C flat. Then we have a whole tone higher, D flat, D, and then the E right and then the F and then the G. So let's do that one more time. The A flat is our root, then the option would be the 9, the B flat. The C flat is our minor third and then the D flat would be the 11, the diminished has an 11 quality to it as well. Then D is our flat 5 and then a whole tone higher. There you have it. It's a flat 13. That's another option, right? And so that's why we have this G sharp diminished flat 13 chord here. And then we have the F, which is our six or double flat of seven. And then we have the G, which is surprisingly enough a major seven. So we have a nine and 11 uh, flat six and a major seven and don't have to get completely crazy with all that stuff because you can do some very simple thing you just take one of those voicings maybe this one and then you just say okay tina said i can't add any note a whole step higher so maybe just tweak one note of those voicings that i just give you and just play a note on the same string a whole tone higher so instead of playing the d here which is the flat five we're going to play a note whole tone higher which is the e and the e as we already learned is the flat 13 so we can play this thing that they're playing in that video right and then of course you can also do it with this voicing right and then just you can do it with any of those four notes. <laughs> Is that even true? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Right, so some sound better and others don't sound so good. And also here with the A flat diminished. 
Such a freaking cool sound. And basically this is all you need to know to understand a diminished chord like this, right? That's not replacing a dominant seven chord, which is just a diminished chord. And I was a little bit sad sort of because I found that in this video, Dominic Miller and Paul David seem to be holding back a little bit on their knowledge. I had the feeling, but that's just me. They didn't want to have it too complicated so uh, people could really like follow along. And they said some things like, you know, if you follow the chords, it could possibly sound technical or robot robotical. If you care too much about the chords, then you can't tell a storyline or something like this. And I, I can't agree at all like on this, right? You can tell a great story, story with different sounds on different chords, right? It's of course all about what you hear and that you can hear ahead. And you can also listen to Dominic Miller when he plays his solo. Check it out what he's playing on the diminished chord. He's choosing the notes. I think it's one note every time on the diminished chord. This one note, he has been chosen, I think, very carefully. It's like a flat five, for example. And of course you can just play, play the A minor pentatonic over all those chords and there's nothing wrong with it. But today I want to show you some other options because never hurts to have more option, never know hurts to, you know, have your musical theory background going. So one thing we can wonder about is where does that freaky chord even come from, right? And there's actually a scale. There is a scale where you can find the diminished uh, chord, sorry, and that's the harmonic minor scale. And especially in this um, tune, it would be the A harmonic minor scale, right? So if we're playing an A harmonic minor scale, right, then we would probably say this is a G sharp, major seven leading to the A. But we could also think that's an A flat, right? <laughs> because we need an A flat diminished chord. So then we have A flat to the C flat. That will be our minor third. And then the D would be our flat five, right? And there we have it. Play a scale. So maybe let's start here. And then. And then just like skip every other note. And then you will have the diminished chord in this scale. So we can think in conclusion, what's the parent scale of the diminished chord? It's A harmonic minor. So let's play a solo on the chords using the A harmonic minor scale on the diminished chord, just for a change. Just remember, I talked about the F diminished chord, right? That's of course the same chord at the A flat diminished, right? Because we can shift stuff around, sorry, going out of a tangent, right? So if we play it like this, we can play it like this, right? And we can play it like this. I'm saying the F diminished is the same chord as the A flat diminished, meaning you can still play the freaking A harmonic minor scale there. And just like if you shift stuff around, um, it looks the same, but your option right here it was the flat 13 is going to be the major 7 here, is going to be the 9 here and the 11 here. So stuff like this really truly fascinates me. Check it out. And another way to talk about the diminished chord is of course to play the diminished scale. What's that? We already played it, right? That if you have your diminished arpeggio, right? Right, and 
Side note, the Django Reinhardt Apache is a really good idea to practice that. that so the Django Reinhardt Apache is just like always playing a minor third on each string. Right, you can use that here also. I'm going to try to do that in my next solo. But if you remember, we have been playing it on one string and then we have right to find the options for the chord. We always had that whole tone step after each note. That's the diminished scale. That's it. It's a symmetrical scale. It's whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone. Of course, you probably don't want to play it like this. <laughs> okay, you can do that. Yeah, and guess what? You can shift that as well, of course. Very nice sound. Don't uh, let you tell, tell anybody. <laughs> and it's a very nice sound. Let don't let anybody get. You, uh, and it's a. I really like the sound. So I'm going to play one time a little improvisation using the harmonic minor scale, and then later on I'm going to use the diminished scale or the whole tone half tone scale. What I personally like to do because it seems so easy since we can just shift it along. But of course, it sounds different. I like to visualize, you know me and my chords, visualizing the chords. I would check the chords and then visualize the pattern before I start improvising. So I, I'm starting A minor pentatonic. Harmonic minor. trick I want to tell you what I just did. Of course you can visualize that diminished scale is like you know you know whole steps glued together and but you know you need to know your entrance point so you can say okay A minor C C is not going to happen on the A flat diminished anymore so it's going to be C flat and then I have my entrance point right it could be any other point A flat Right, let's do that one more time. For let me know if you have any questions. Never stop exploring, challenge yourself, learn music theory. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>